Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about food safety when you and your family go out to eat. Having someone else prepare your meal is something that many of us do as a way to celebrate and relax. Unfortunately, many of us also have a story about going out to eat and then coming down with food poisoning. Most of the time, the signs were there, but you may not have known what to look for. In this video, we would like to show you some important things that you can look for to help you decide on the best place to eat. First, before you go into the restaurant, you might want to take a closer look around the parking lot. The trash area should usually have dumpsters, and they should have lids on them. Also, there really shouldn't be any trash on the ground, and the dumpsters should look relatively clean. A place that doesn't have a clean dumpster area is probably going to have a pest problem. You're not okay with having pests in your own house, so why would you be okay with having pests in your restaurant? Listen, trash is trash, but it should still be handled in a sanitary way that discourages bugs and rodents from living nearby. When you walk into any building, especially one you're planning on eating in, you shouldn't be greeted with any overpowering smells. Fast food places will smell like frying oil, and seafood places will smell like fish. But if the smell seems stronger than you would normally expect, there is a good chance that something is wrong in the kitchen. Maybe the ventilation systems aren't being cleaned enough. Maybe the refrigeration system isn't keeping the food cold enough so that it can prevent from spoiling. If you're smelling trash, that's also a bad sign. They probably aren't getting rid of trash quick enough, and they're just letting it sit in the back. A restaurant should want to smell appetizing so that their customers want to eat there. You should be concerned if a restaurant doesn't care about having bad odors coming from the kitchen. Another thing you should see as soon as you walk through the door is the health department inspection placard. These are the certificates given to businesses after their food inspections are completed. Restaurants that pass inspection receive a white placard. Yellow placards mean they got a conditional rating, which means that during the inspection there were a few things being done wrong. A conditional doesn't fully mean that the restaurant will make you sick, but it lets you know that some issues are going on in the kitchen that need to be fixed. A red placard means the restaurant got an unsatisfactory rating. These restaurants have tons of issues with keeping food safe. It's probably a good idea to just pass these places by. Be cautious of places that don't keep placards where customers can see them. Any restaurant that gets the satisfactory certificate should be proud to show it off. Another certificate that you will see is the food manager certification. Don't panic if you don't see one. Not all food facilities are required to have one. Only places with more complex menus like diners and full service restaurants are required to have one. This certificate shows that someone who works there in a supervisory role has taken classes on safe food handling and prep. Once you sit down, another good idea is to check out the tables and menus. Sticky tables are usually a bad sign, and honestly, it's just kind of gross. Nobody wants to eat at a sticky table covered with crumbs, but there's more to it. Not cleaning the tables often enough probably means they don't clean often enough elsewhere. It's also pretty gross to open up a sticky menu with old food in it. It really only takes a few seconds to wipe down a table or menu. When places don't take the time to do that, you kind of have to wonder if they are taking the time to clean the rest of the restaurant. If the restaurant you're in has a soda machine or any drinks that you get yourself, it's good to take a closer look around the machine. The nozzles shouldn't look dirty because they are supposed to be cleaned every night. There also shouldn't be a lot of fruit flies or other bugs. The bugs are attracted to the sugar in the drinks, and if drains and nozzles aren't cleaned often, the bugs will start to hang around. You can also learn a lot from checking out the bathroom. The bathroom should always be well stocked, particularly the soap and paper towels. Hand washing is one of the most important tools in preventing foodborne illness. There should also be a sign that says, employees must wash their hands before returning to work. Employees should be washing their hands pretty often, but seeing this sign in the bathroom means they are probably being taught good hand washing practices. All the things we've talked about so far are tips for judging how good a restaurant is at keeping the building clean. While they are really important to consider, most of the time when people get sick, it's because of the way people are handling our food. It's not always easy to watch every single person who comes in contact with our food, but there are a few things you can look for. Workers need to have their hair restrained when they deal with food. They should also try and keep their uniforms as clean as possible. Something a little trickier to spot are the fingernails. Having dirty fingernails makes it a lot easier to contaminate food, so their fingernails should be well maintained. Overall, food service workers should look clean and prepared. 
More important than how workers look is how they act when around food. Touching food with bare hands is a big no-no. Workers need to have some sort of barrier between their bare hands and the food they're making. When you can, try and see if the people making the food are wearing gloves. If you happen to see someone change their gloves, check to see the worker is washing their hands before putting on a new pair. If you don't see the food service worker wearing gloves, they should be using wax paper or tongs so that there is no bare hand contact with your food. It is also important to note that the only thing employees should be touching while wearing gloves is the food. If they need to touch their face, money, or anything else, they should be changing their gloves and washing their hands. Sick food service workers are another thing to watch out for. Anyone who's sick should not be working around your food. The flu is not a foodborne illness, but it can be spread just as easily in a restaurant. Along with food handling, another common way for customers to get sick is if foods are not being heated or cooled to the right temperatures. It's almost impossible for consumers to know if a restaurant is taking the right steps to prevent foods from being contaminated. But you can observe restaurant policies that help to ensure food safety. Two of the most common policies have to do with eggs and raw meats. Many facilities will no longer serve sunny side up eggs or red meat that is cooked rare. Both policies are for the same reason. Undercooked foods are much more likely to contain foodborne illnesses than fully cooked food items. If you are ever served a meal that seems undercooked or not the right temperature, you are allowed to send it back. It is always better to be safe now than sorry later. Most every restaurant and food establishment has some kind of issue from time to time. Ultimately, it's up to you to make the final choice of whether or not you should eat at certain places. Hopefully the information you learned today will help to make those decisions a little easier. We hope you enjoyed this presentation and that you tune in for our next video. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.